the former WCW, NWA, and TNA a World Heavyweight Champion, the WWE Hall of Famer, one of the most charismatic wrestlers of all time, one of the all-time greats, the icon, the franchise, this is Sting! Joining us on the line right now is a former eight-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion, two-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, four-time TNA World Heavyweight Champion, and, of course, a WWE Hall of Famer class of 2016. You may know him as the icon or the franchise. He is the man called Sting. Sting, how are you doing? (laughs) I'm doing great. That was a great intro. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no problem. And I can keep going and going with you. You've had uh, such a, a great and storied career. But the real reason kind of we're talking today is because of a big launch that's going to be happening over this week. It's all about Be Good, and it was a huge project that you were a part of that Rick Bassman had put together, and just a, just a massive show with so many superstars. So can you just tell us the, a little bit about Be Good and, and what your experience was like being on that show with all those other massive stars? Well, it's a humbling experience, of course. I mean, with all these incredible athletes and 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 celebrities, and you know, e- even Rick. You know, we go way back uh, from the very beginning. Asman, I'd have never even got into pro wrestling. So, uh, kudos to Rick for that. And and uh, man, great to kind of in a way come full circle with him and. Uh, to be doing stuff like this, and and it was an honor, of course, and again humbled to be on with guys like Rusty Coons. I mean, Butterbean, he's cleaned a few clocks for sure. Um, you know, one of the guys that really impressed me so much, the Angel of Skid Row, uh, Darren Joseph, man, and then Darren McBee. I mean, you know, I I had a little bit of contact with him uh, years ago, and you know, always knew who he was, and. But we kind of reconnected here through this, through the Be Good deal. And man, what a what a great guy he is! I'm I'm looking forward to uh, developing even more of a friendship with him. Michael Hearn, a freak. My sons love this guy. I mean, I'm a- anyone that can reverse grip, you know, bench press, flat bench press, 405 pounds for reps is a freak. And I ran with the freaks, but I mean, he's got them all top. So. I mean, you know, Boss Rudin, Benny the Jet, so many of them. I mean, it was it was just great to be on with guys like that and a variety of people. So it was a good deal. And what 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 is be good? What is it to me? Uh, I mean, man, uh, you know, I said it before. I'll say it again. It's so simple and it's so cliche. But you know, honestly, it's treat others the way you'd like to be treated. And if everyone lived by that standard. Uh, the world would be a, a much better place. And, um, you know, like the old saying goes, the only way for evil to prevail is and do nothing. So it's time for, you know, men especially to, you know, get off their hands, stop sitting on, on your hands. And I'm, I'm including myself. So um, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I've used that line so many times over the years, but it is so true uh, you know, be be good if 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 we are other oriented instead of instead of self oriented always. You know, the opposite of what our culture teaches and preaches, and what our culture is breeding, which you know puts me, myself, and I first. Um, you know, be good is the opposite of that. And um, you know, instead of looking the other way, let's 
let's look right into it and then deal with it. Um, be good as parents, you know, pouring into their kids, especially dads, especially fathers. Uh, that's what be good is all about, man, to me. That was such a great, awesome experience, and you named so many great guys like Deion Joseph, Darren McBee, Butterbean, Rusty Coons, Michael Hearn, Benny the Jet, Boss Rudin, Lou Ferrigno, uh, makes a little cameo on there. I mean, so many great guys, but you yourself, and the reason kind of you were asked to be a part of it was because of such a huge star that you are and, and the magnitude of you and your career. So when you kind of think back and just look back at not only Steve Borden, the person, but Sting, you know, the wrestler, Sting, the guy that was a superhero to so many, a guy that was a hero to so many, what is kind of the lasting legacy or, or the stamp that Sting kind of leaves behind, maybe both as a man and even as, as a pro wrestler, because you were such a huge star in the business. Man, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that people would remember, you know, things like, you know, my work ethic and just, you know, being dependable. Um, you know, I didn't pull no shows. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't milk the injuries, you know, and I, you know, I had the longevity. But, you know, when I was in the ring, I, I, I tried to bring it every night. I tried to be as entertaining as I possibly could, you know, and involve the crowd to participate in the match uh, because, man, it's entertainment. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping fans will just remember the work ethic and, and, you know, that I, from my gear to trying to be in shape and trying to be believable and trying to, you know, all, always be better, always be, you know, innovative and creative and change and evolve uh, to step out of your comfort zone. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll remember that things like that about me. Um, and, you know, outside of the ring, it's, it's almost like whether you're looking outside the ring and, and the wrestling part of it or you're dealing with the wrestling ring and wrestling, there's a common thread, uh, it, it, it seems, and it wasn't planned. It's just, it's just as I look back and reflect, this is just kind of the way it seems. But the common thread would be, to sum it all up is just that there's, there's something beyond wrestling. There's something beyond WrestleMania. There's something beyond, you know, the biggest match and the biggest payoff and the biggest reaction from the crowd and the biggest amount of notoriety and being in the limelight. And, and, you know, for, for me, it, it is something supernatural. So it is God. It is, uh, Jesus Christ, Christ in me, and anything good that ever came out of me is because of Christ in me. And, and this is only over the last 20 years, but uh, before before that, I was I was uh, me, myself, and I. I self oriented all the way and going for everything that our world calls success, and then attaining it, and only to find out that you know I I was lost and needed some help and major help. And uh, so when I surrendered to Jesus Christ, that's when things changed for me in August of 1998. So that, that common thread would be, you know, that no matter what my character was, whether I was coming out of a baby face dressing room or a heel dressing room, or, you know, there was always a, a certain sort of something about <clears throat> my character, I think. And wrestling fans have shared this with me thousands of times that there was just something something about you know my demeanor that just said you know you you helped me stand up you know for myself you helped me to realize what bullying was all about you helped me to you know the only relationship that I had with my dad was watching you and so I think about all these things and it was just the the Christ in me and that common thread that there's something beyond wrestling <clears throat> I hope this is all making sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> this, is, this is just kind of the way, you know, I, I see it. Um, you know, it didn't matter what dressing room I came out of. There was always something about the character Sting that just says there's something be, beyond wrestling. And uh, so I would hope that people would remember me as, you know, all the work ethic stuff, but also the Christ in me, the follower of Jesus, if you will. Well, I know me myself. I'm just a huge Sting fan. I'm at my, my home office looking at a bunch of Sting autographs, Sting figures. So you're definitely a larger-than-life 
superhero, both kind of in and out of the ring. And what you say on Be Good, there's so much good stuff that you kind of put out there, where you started working $25 a night, $50 a night, to where you kind of ended up and how you weren't happy and found God. So there's so much great stuff on there, whether it was, you know, you as the surfer sting or, or doing the, the crow gimmick and fighting off the NWO or whether you're wrestling Rick Rude and Rick Flair and Cactus Jack. I mean, there's just so many great points in your career, but I just want to ask you, because my favorite feud personally was against Big Van Vader, so just would love to know from kind of personal perspective, do you have a favorite match with Vader? Because you guys had so many classics. That's just something that I just always thought of because out of all the awesome feuds you had and all the great matches, I always think of you versus Vader, just the perfect chemistry and the the perfect symmetry. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I don't have one match uh, with with Leon with Vader, I, I have you know images, pictures, moments of matches in in and out of the ring with him. It's amazing how many. It's a, it's as though there are as many with him. You know, not quite, but I mean, you know, as somebody like Ric Flair. Um, but you know, Leon, he was straight out of Japan when he first came the United States and, and did the American style wrestling. And I was definitely solely responsible for taming him. (laughs) Uh, He was, you know, in Japan, it is extremely, you know, stiff, very believable, extremely stiff over there in America, here in America, it's not nearly as stiff. And uh, thankfully I was always one of those kind of wrestlers that I would rather have it stiff. I wanted things to be, always so believable uh, that the people wouldn't have any doubt in their minds, you know, that somebody like Vader was trying to literally kill me. And it's funny because I, I do have fans that will approach me even now and say, man, I remember one night, you know, in, you know, name the city, name the town. And we sat there and really believed that Vader was trying to kill you. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, but I, I tamed him. I'll, I'll never forget being in Gainesville, Georgia. This is another picture, you know, Gainesville, Georgia, doing a TV taping for WCW. And this is like one of the first few matches that I had with him. Maybe, maybe it was the very first one. It was on TV. And, I, we, you know, very small civic center and we're filming this TV thing and there's the dressing room area is really, really bad. There's not great dressing rooms there. So, you know, a lot of the guys are literally underneath the bleachers where the people are sitting, you know, getting dressed and all and talking over matches and everything. And I'm there with Harley race who's managing Leon, you know, and we're just moments away from getting in the ring and Harley's got his cigarette and he's smoking that thing just casually. And, and all of a sudden I hear this person, somebody, you know, violently ill, you know, on the other side of the the, the bleachers or the, in the civic center. And I said, what is that? Who is, is that a, like a dying, you know, animal or something? What, what is going, he said, that's Leon. I go, what's the matter? He's sick. Sick from what? He's nervous kid. Cause he's wrestling you tonight. You know, Oh, no. So, now I've got a number one you know, with somebody who's, you know, 350, 400 pounds straight from Japan, but he's also sick and he's also nervous. I got everything going against me. It's it's my day to die in the, in the pro wrestling world. And so <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just like one of those nights I got in the ring with him and then it was night after night. And, you know, he, he did, he, he, he was, I mean, he would lift me off my feet, just throwing his, his punches and, uh, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget him doing a moonsault in the Omni, Atlanta, Georgia. We had done it every night. By then, we'd, we'd work so many times. And he comes off at 350 pounds. And for whatever reason, we, we just hit a certain way, and, and we, we both kind of bounced up in the air. And on the way back down, I got kind of cockeyed, crooked, and that 350 pounds landed on me and it kind of put my chin down into my sternum and my eyeballs were almost looking right into my ribs. And I saw literally, you know, one of my ribs, it, 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 it was grotesque to me. It was almost like it was going to come out of the skin. So 
So if you take your shirt under your finger, your index finger, just poke out, that's what it looked like. Oh, boy. And I went, yeah, so I said, oh, boy. Oh, man. Broke my my rib that night with him. And, uh, Leon, hang on, my, my, my rib is broken. It's broken. You know, just, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? <laughs> High face the referee and have him disqualify. It was a world title match that night, and we were going somewhere. We couldn't drop the title that night. Uh, otherwise, I would have. Just just pin me and beat me. But we were going somewhere else, and, and obviously I had the hopes that I would get well enough to go where we were going. But anyway, just, just uh, memories like that with, with Leon. And, and, man, he was a, a teddy bear, you know, after all, all the matches. He was just so grateful always. And I was grateful to him, too, because – it was believable. I mean, fans really, honestly, truly did believe that he was trying to kill me. And they believed, I had so many of them say that they believed that, that there was no way I was going to be able to, you know, beat this guy or overcome him. So uh, I always loved the the big man matches, and he was one of the big men, one of my favorite big men to work against. So great memories. Not to mention, you know, I was able to spend the last eight months of, of his life uh, with him, he was in the Dallas area, and I live in the Dallas area now. And so I saw him, you know, in and out of the hospital. Uh, I met him for dinner, for lunch, for you know, until he died. And um, you know, I think it would be kind of cool for people to to know this, but you know, he he wanted to know who Jesus Christ was, and I shared Jesus with him, and he ended up giving his life to Jesus Christ, and. He did what we call get born again. And so I know that I'll see him again, and um, he'll probably want to have a match when I get up there. But <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, lots of good memories with Leon. That is great. Didn't even realize you guys uh, reconnected, um, you know, towards the, the latter end of his life. That is really, really cool. And then another kind of full circle moment uh, for you. Very cool. Absolutely, and his son Jesse was a big part of it too. I, I was able to go to his funeral and speak at his funeral as well, and just uh, you know, great, great matches, great relationship, especially toward the end there, and and uh, good stuff happened, you know, before he died. So it's all good. Yep, I remember vividly. Great American Bash '92, Starcade '92. You guys had an awesome match on Power Hour. Super Brawl 3 might be my favorite match of all time. You were Invader, obviously, in that awesome strap match. And then Slamboree 94. Those are just some matches off the top of my head that I can think of that you Invader had that I just absolutely loved. And just thought that's one of my favorite feuds, if not the top feud. Maybe you versus the NWO, a little Batman Joker kind of thing, uh, Sting versus the NWO as the Crow. But you Vader, as far as one-on-one matches, no doubt. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. It's one of my favorites, too. Also, just want to throw out there, Be Good coming out this week. You can follow Rick Bassman and Talking Tough. You can go to Talking Tough Pod on Instagram and Talking Tough on Facebook for more details on the link and everything as far as Be Good. So just uh, think if you could just one last push for Be Good. Absolutely, man. I, I would encourage you to tune it in. And then tear off the knob, as I've said so many times over the years. (laughs) But, you know, very interesting to hear perspectives of all these different celebrities and athletes um, and what they're trying to do to make a change, um, a shift in our culture and turn things around. And um, very impressive. And I was just grateful to be a part of it. And uh, I, I think that Literally, I, I think that there will be people's lives would probably be changed just listening to this. I uh, totally agree. I was luckily and ably uh, able to be the content producer on it, and Rick, uh, the honor that Rick uh, kind of chose me. So I was able to kind of do a lot of research on everybody and, and then obviously be invested in the program itself. So it is just an unbelievable show, and the message is just truly unbelievable. And just honored not only to have you on today, but honored to have you be a part of the uh, the Be Good family. So thank you for that. It is my pleasure, I promise you. It's good to be part of the Be Good family. I just want to also mention you could follow The Stinger on Twitter, at Sting, and then, of course, 
on Instagram at Stinger just to give you some plugger pluggeroonies there for uh, for the Stinger. So Sting, thank you so much uh, for all the time. Everyone out there, um, look forward and look out for Be Good. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the two man power trip of wrestling. What the world is downloading.